In the previous tutorial, we saw that if we sampled from a normal distribution, then the distribution of sample means would also be normal in shape. But what happens if we sample from a non-normal distribution, like an exponential distribution or a discrete distribution? In R, let's first plot what an exponential distribution would look like. As you can see, it's non-normal, but in this case it has a mean of 1 and a standard distribution, a standard deviation of 1. Okay. So as before, we can build an empty vector of length 500, and we can sample 500 numbers at random and then plot them. And as you can see, the distribution of these randomly sampled numbers reflects closely the shape of the parent population. You can also see that the mean of these is pretty close to the mean of 1 of the parent population. And if we do this again with 500 random numbers, we get another mean that's pretty similar to the population mean. So to create a sampling distribution, as before, we can set a certain sample size here, a size of n, and then create a vector which will store each sample mean. So we run a for loop, and then we plot 500 sample means on a histogram. As you can see, it's skewed to the right, as the parent population is, but it does have some aspects of normality. So if we increase the sample size from 5 to 10, the skew reduces, and it becomes more normal in shape. Do this again increase to 20, becomes more normal, and lastly, with 30, becomes even more normal. And the mean of these sampling distributions is again very close to the population mean. Lastly, let's do the same thing with a discrete population. So here we have six values, and each one is associated with a different probability of being sampled. Okay, and the mean is defined as the sum of each value multiplied by its probability. So if we sample 1,000 random numbers and plot it as a table, we have probabilities percentages roughly reflecting the probability of each of these being sampled. And we can show this as a bar plot. And the mean of this is relatively close to the population mean of 4.4. And we can see if we randomly sample another, say, 1,000 subjects and take the mean, it's also pretty much identical. But if we plot the sampling means and build a distribution out of those for a sample of size 5. You can see it's a little bit skewed to the left, similar to the parent population, but as we increase the sample size to 10 and plot those, it becomes more normal. And increase it to 20, becomes even more normal, and finally, if we have a sample size of 30, it becomes more and more like a normal distribution. So all we're doing is we're refining our previous definition of the central limit theorem to state that if we sample from any type of distribution, no, ma no matter its shape, as long as it is a sample size of about 30 or more, then it will be approximately a normal sampling distribution of means.